Hello. How are you doing? And welcome to the Celtic End Podcast. How are you doing? I'm Stephen Ray. I'm joined by Kevin McCogan on this momentous state of Celtic State of Mind quadruple treble charity weekender. Try to read it all there and make an arse here. <laughs> Just like well, you yeah, right. So you need to excuse the surroundings. I've been looking in at some of the the podcasts going on all day, and there's Celtic memorabilia um, in our spare room. When we moved into this house, I thought, great, spare room, pictures up, scarves, memorabilia. But my wife commandeered it, and I've got a Jimmy Choo uh, picture up with flowers hanging off it. <laughs> well, I think so, things just look a wee bit better. So yeah. Uh, um, so I. So before we really get uh, started, anyone, uh, hopefully everyone's been tuning in to all the podcasts been on before and uh, they've been donating to this momentous day for Paul John Dykes and his uh, State of Mind uh, Twitter account and uh, YouTube. Sorry, the phone was going there. Um, I so donate where you can, just over 13, th- nearly £13,500 donated yeah. so far, which is superb. Um we're quite a new podcast, although I've been kicking about doing podcasts for a, a wee while, but we've only done, what, 20-odd shows so far. So, yeah, all good. So we've got a wee agenda uh, coming up, but uh, I thought we were going to kick off with Rangers dropping points today, but uh, turns out they didn't, so we'll move on quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just get over that. Yeah, so um, we're going to have what we think is our top 10 matches over the quadruple or potential quadruple treble uh, era. Um, the only caveat was you had to pick at least one game uh, from each of the previous four seasons and the one we're obviously just about to finish uh, with the Scottish Cup final tomorrow. So we've got that coming up. I'm sure we'll have some games in there that we're, we're both sort of, uh, we've both picked, but I'd like to think that we've, we've not all picked the same because we've not looked at each other's list yet. I've left out a lot of crackers, by the way. I'm not happy with mine. I know, because some <laughs> arguments, like how the hell can you leave that out? But, you know, I'm sure we've got a reason uh, done for why we've picked each game. But before we get into that, uh, obviously, Scottish Cup final day tomorrow. What is your, what was the first Scottish Cup final that you went to that you can remember? Um, first Scottish Cup final I went to was the 2007 Cup final, where... Uh, the legend that is Juan jo- Jean Joel Perry Abumbi scored a very lucky goal. Um, me and my dad were at the game, sat in the north stand. Uh, yeah, very not the best of games, and it was Neil Lennon's last game, if memory serves me correct. That was the it was. The he subbed, up, didn't he? I did not look happy when it happened. No, he wasn't. He? <laughs> um, he I was in a chair as well. Like, he had a hip operation that week, and he sat in a chair. He could hardly move. If Do you know it's one of the it's one of the cup finals that I have the least amount of memory about. I think it was a pretty, you know, it wasn't the best of games. It was even the best of, mem- it wasn't even a memorable goal or anything, but and I, I just remember going to, what's that uh, snooker place just outside, uh, Mount, just in Mount Florida. Oh, Minnesota Fats. Aye, so me and a couple of my mates went there after the game for a few beers and then I ended up doing um, some pub in Allison Street. Because my mate was originally Faye, uh, Govan Hill. I'm not even going to mention Govan Hill on this no, podcast. Let's not. Let's just no, I, I, I whack that. Um, I, it wasn't really a, a day I remember much of, to be honest. Um, I think it was just because it was my first Scottish Cup final. Obviously, it's got great memories for me, and I'm just glad yeah. they won it. But it was a scrappy, scrappy goal. I remember Craig Beatty hit it in, it deflected, and then Perry Abumbe stuck out a leg, and stuck out a leg. Uh, mine was the 95 Cup final at Hamden. The Hamden season was my first season ticket. I was 16 at the time. And uh, I remember, also we had done really well in the Cups that year, although we blew the, the League Cup final against Rafe Rovers um, on penalties. But we had pre- quite an easy-ish sort of run at the Cup final that year. And then we get Hibs. In the semis, we drew 0-0 in the first game. Andy Walker missed a penalty in the last 10 minutes and I think Darren Jackson had a brilliant chance to win it for Hibs and blew it. And then in the replay, we absolutely destroyed them 3-1 and it was probably Willie Faulkner, uh, cult hero. Probably his best ever match in a Celtic strip. He was outstanding on that night. And then obviously the Airdrie game. And I just I remember going to my uncle's. I stayed in Cornley Road in Pollock at the time. And my uncle stayed in the other place, Crescent, I think it was, just in the corner. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, he'd say to me, what, you, what do you want to drink? You know, I'll buy you some beer because I was quite <laughs> baby-faced and I couldn't get alcohol out of the <laughs> office. And um, I got a bottle of Mad Dog and he bought a few cans. He bought a uh, bottle of El Dorado. <laughs> uh, old I'll school stuff. Uh, yeah. um, and we went, remember I got to the game. I remember sitting outside Hamden Park about 15, 20 minutes before kickoff and we were actually drinking cans of tenants. And, I mean, I was... I mean, I'm 16, I couldn't hold on my drink. I was blazing getting into the game. But this was about a year before the no drinking in the streets kind of rule came in in Glasgow. Uh, right. mm-hmm. uh, the polis never really batted an eyelid right to the game. I remember the goal, you know, because we were right, I think we were fourth row for the back um, when Van Hoydon headers it in. And I just remember it being, uh, I just remember it being, uh, would you call it, you know, just a terrible game. And then I think uh, Van Hoydonk went off injured and Peter Grant was kind of limping through the game. I think it was just sheer relief because it was the first cup final I'd ever seen Celtic, I'd ever been to and actually seen Celtic lift a, a trophy. So it was mm-hmm. big for me, you know. I think it was just because it took so long. I think those games you just won, you know. Yeah. And thank God we did because God knows where we would have been if we hadn't have won that. You know, but what I remember... But what I remember was just the, the celebrations went on forever on the park. I mean, because we had like three quarters, maybe even four fifths of the stadium, and they just the team went all the way around, and uh, it was just sheer relief. And then after the game, we got on a bus, and there was these guys, they did create a Boddington's, and they were sharing that amongst us. And then I get home, I was totally blazing. I bought a bottle of Pulse, a pound a bottle of cider. <laughs> had a bottle of that, and then my mate, had one for himself and I took some of that and I don't remember it and apparently I get carried home at seven o'clock. Well, and at least you saw the game. I, but the worst thing about it is that I'd actually agreed to do um, paintball with my work the next day and I had the almightiest of uh, hangovers. I mean, I was 16 coming up for 17. You know, I wasn't really much of a drinker in my youth and uh, I, I suffered for days on that one. So, <laughs> great memories. I have Scottish Cups. So, um, I just want to say before we move on, I tuned in. Uh, good to see Mark and Bo uh, back in the podcasting game from the Ball Boys. You know they've they've come out of retirement that many times. They're they're a bit like Kiss, aren't they? It's uh, certainly interesting what I, what I listened to <laughs> the, the last fifteen minutes. Yeah. Uh, they, they talk about everything but football. Um, uh, it's just uh, like two guys in the pub who are absolutely blazing, and they were probably uh, two sober pair of people there. I know. Yeah. The, the, like I said, the the. The podcast and equivalent of Kiss with that many comebacks. They're probably called Glasgow Kiss coming for Casamilk, right <laughs> enough. <laughs> um right, so we'll move on to what we um what we think is our top ten. So I'll do my number ten, you'll yeah. do yours, and we'll go back and forth, yeah. we'll work our way through. But I'll so for mine, I'll speak about mine, and for yours, you just speak about yours because I've no doubt some of them are gonna cross over and I'd, I'd oh, rather, man. you know. But I think it's just like you know, the, I, I, the way I did this is I went through each season and I picked out all the games that were memorable. Mm-hmm. So this is totally domestic, so there's no European games within this because it's a domestic quadruple treble we're going for, although mm-hmm. there was some great European memories and some shankers as well. Um, I picked out maybe five or six for each season and I tried to whittle it down for there and it was tough. You know, that, try to get a top I've, ten. I've so, what I say to anybody that criticizes us for owner selections is go and go and try it yourself and see what you come up with because it wasn't easy. So, you go first. What was your what's your number ten in the top ten of games throughout this right, quadruple okay. treble? This one definitely won't be the same. Me and you here, but this is a game um, which I just think demonstrates how well the football was, and it was the St Johnston nil Celtic six when we went 5-0 up in the first half. Yeah, and it just yeah. clearly demonstrated how well we could play under Brendan Rodgers. And James A. Forrest got four that day and was unplayable that day. And it was one of those days where everything, every time we went ahead, it looked as if we were going to score a goal. And it, to me, it was just great attack in football. And it was one of the one of the away games that I'd been to after a while. It was my first one after a while because I had kind of dropped away from it. And I just thought that was a a great way of how we could play and it just dominated from start to finish. It was it was annoying that we kind of took the foot off in the second half, but yeah, it was just a fantastic... To me, it was a fantastic game. And I think it's always stuck in my memory. 
And I thought, I have to put that in at number 10. It doesn't maybe deserve further down, but it definitely deserves a top It doesn't there. deserve maybe the gravitas, but it's if it's uh, it's definitely a memorable game. I'd looked at that one myself. It's not on my list, um, so I can talk about it. Um, what I remember is that we were actually in a bit of a shit run at the time. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. And then out of nowhere, this this performance came in. And like you said, Forrest had just went to an, a level that was just... Um, and he, even with Scotland as well, he was banging them in. Like, aye, it was tremendous stuff. Because they just... We, like, Rangers were playing the same day, and then they were saying, oh, we really need to keep it going. And, like, the crowd was going mental after 5-0 at half-time. And normally you aye. think, a crowd would need to be doing this, but we're just, like, so happy to be 5-0 up at Perth. <laughs> you know, but a great game. It yeah. has to be a yeah. game, so... So my number 10 on my list was Celtic 3, Aberdeen 0 in the League Cup final, 27th of November 2016, Rogic, Forrest and Dembele. Mm-hmm. And the reason I picked that, although I think it was, I think Celtic really played well on the day and it was, it was the first trophy for Brendan Rodgers. Mm-hmm. It was during the Invincible season. But what I remember about that game was the Celtic players going into a huddle and now that thing when the what, New Zealand did the hacker in the rugby, yeah. and I think it's usually England that sort of line up on the, the line. They all sort of link arms and sort of mm-hmm. as if they're trying to face them down, as if you're not going to intimidate us. The Aberdeen players did that. And I remember thinking, oh, man, they're really up for this year. Uh, and then for the first 10 minutes, they didn't get a kick of the ball. The Celtic mm-hmm. were just utterly dominant. And then Rodgick scores an absolute peach to make it 1-0. And then not long after, Forrest makes it two, and it was a pretty, you know, it was pretty easy for then on in. And then obviously we get the penalty in the second half with Dumbelli. It was just because it was a, the hundredth trophy. I think Celtic had won. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was three 0 against Aberdeen in the cup final, and it just kind of after the sort of last visit to Hamden, big or the big sort of last big visit yeah. to Hamden we had the previous season, obviously losing in penalties. You know, you weren't really sure what route this team was going to go down, and that that just set us off for the season big time. Yeah. I mean, I think once that happened, you, I certainly was never fearful of going to Hamden, you know, certainly under a Brendan Rodgers team, because you knew nine times out of ten you were going to get a, a decent result, and, well, we still were, so, yeah. but, a but very easy um, game. For about five or six years, we had a pretty poor record at Hamden. Now, we wasn't to Kilmarnock in the final, wasn't to St Myrna in the semi-final, Ross County a couple of times, uh, wasn't to Rangers, Hearts, you know, Hearts as well, yeah. as well. well, with that dodgy penalty they got, so... You know, it kind of it blew that sort of hoodoo out the window. Um, so, I it was that was good. So, what's your number nine on your top ten? My number nine is Celtic won Rangers nil League Cup final of last year. So, <laughs> um, I just think that has to be in there somewhere because if ever there's a a case of how the hell did we win that game, that is yeah. definitely up there. You just say to, you just say to anybody, watch that game because. We should never have won that game, if truth be told, because if it wasn't for Fraser Foster, we'd have lost the game about 6 or 7 now. really. We had that many chances, and we took the one chance that we got and then nearly blew it again with we, we us getting a penalty. But that is a, that was a tough watch, being at Hamden. Absolute assault to the skin, and then to finally get it over the line. And then I remember Rangers had a chance. They put it right across the boat, the, the goal line, and it was the whole crowd just went, oh, and we just went, oh, thank God for that. I was maybe saying something other than thank God, but um, I do, I do realise we're on a podcast here for yeah, a lot of people yeah. watching. So, yeah, that has to be there. That has to be. Yeah, well, yeah. I was. it's on my list, so I'll not talk about it yet. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so my number nine is the Celtic, oh, sorry, Hearts 1, Celtic 2, um, on the 27th of February 2019, which was Neil Lennon's first game back as manager. I think it wasn't the greatest of games, it wasn't even the greatest of performances, but I think it was a pretty pivotal moment in that, that whole season because Rangers had sort of closed the gap on us a wee bit. And I think the I think the points went, I think they played the night before and the points had went to, I think, uh, five points. And also, if we draw that, it's 26, and there's still a couple of derby games to go. We've just lost our best manager in in years, I suppose. Um, you know, a couple of trebles back to back, one and unbeaten. And you could see that this whole thing could have fell apart. Um, yeah. I remember uh, on the morning, the Sunday before the game, Claude Puel got sacked for Leicester. Mm-hmm. And I messaged Harry Brady for Celtic Underground, and I said, Rogers will be off to Leicester, and I think Lennon will be in. 
for the rest of the season. And he came back to me because he'd had a podcast several months before talking about how Rogers was kind of, you know, lifting his skirt to the English media about, you know, he was still available and still up here kind of thing. And he got criticised quite a bit for that podcast, but it just stuck my mind that this job has just became available. And and I think Rogers just has that kind of thing about him where I felt as if, if they came calling, he would go. And the fact that he went and tried to take every bit of um, <laughs> staff with him as well, I think it just... Oh, trying to take the ball boys with him as well, if he could, you know what I mean? But the, was... the goals that day, you know, the, the things that stick out, the counter-attack with uh, young Henderson passing mm-hmm. it on to uh, Oliver Burke, who then played in, you know, it was probably the best piece of play he'd done his whole time at Celtic, where he slipped in James Forrest um, to just tap it home. It's a, it a, brilliant, a brilliant goal, and then obviously Hearts make it one each, and we're going into injury time and Scott Brown sort of just lofts one in to you know I mean Edward's free six seven yards out uh, how the hell he's free you've no idea but uh and he buries it and it was just bedlam I just remember uh Damien Duff punching uh Johnny Hayes in the chin <laughs> but I think the, one of the good things about that is just you see the two contrasting reactions you see Craig Levine, Craig Levine. Sick, and then you've got you know, Neil Lennon running down Gorgie Road, nearly, yeah. you know, by the time he gets in. But so, I've got to admit, that was close to being on my list, but I, uh, I couldn't. I think it it's just not so much the performance, it was just the whole thing about it that I felt it had to be in my uh, in my top 10. So, yeah, that one, that one's in there. Uh, what's, your, what's your number eight? Number eight is a, maybe a bit of an interesting one. It's Aberdeen 3, Celtic 4, and Boxing Day. Yes. The new, that it's was not just mine. I was thinking about it though. <laughs> it, it's a game that has everything. Um, penalties, maybe contentious for Aberdeen at best. Um, well, they call him being the referee. Um, what more can be said about that? But I think the thing that sticks out for me is that the piece of individual brilliance from Edward. He just yeah. somehow turns the Aberdeen defence. I think it's McKenna and just hits it with his left foot and it just dinks right over. And I was watching it in Chapman's uh, with my mate Danny and old George, and I think I nearly choked old George about 70, 70 year old when it was Chapman's, in, but... I think that's where the ball boys go and drink. Uh, that's a great pub, you know, great Celtic pub, you know. Um, but that that had to be in there because that was a, a game I think Hibs drew one each way, Rangers at Ibrox as well. And I, I think it, it just had everything because we went ahead and then, you know, equalised and then went ahead again. And Scott Sinclair got a hat trick and he wasn't true, really right? playing great, but it was. That's what Sinclair gave you. He was in the right place at the right time. And that, that for me, deserves to be there because it's a game against Aberdeen that has everything for me. It was in my top 20, but I had <laughs> I had other games that I wanted in. So, I I mean, it's a tremendous game. And like you said, that Edward goal was just outstanding. Uh, brilliant stuff. Uh, for me, my number eight is one you've already mentioned, is Celtic 1 Rangers 0 We Cup Final. <laughs> it's the only game I've picked for that season. Uh, in my list, I think, because mm-hmm. uh, we, because I, so we obviously, like I said at the start, we had to pick one game from each season, but it was the one that kind of stuck it st- stood out for me. I think it was one of the hardest watches I've ever had so for, uh, following Celtic in regards to how they absolutely battered us. You know, we couldn't get control of the midfield. I think Lewis Morgan made one forward pass in the whole game, and. F- and I think it was the kickoff. <laughs> well, that, I, I, well, that there's a stat, there's a stat kicking about that that was his only forward pass in the whole game. So we just couldn't get up the park with him and uh, him and up front. So, well, but the, him in the lineup, I was like, oh, here we go. You've got to be kidding yeah. me. They'll, they'll destroy him. You but know? the thing that sticks out is just the extraordinary the performance for Fraser Foster. Mm-hmm. I think he's better than David Marshall's in Barcelona. I think. Marshall had made saves in that game. I think it's just his age and the fact mm-hmm. how he got into the team, which kind of highlights that one. But I think on this day, how the hell they couldn't score. And then obviously Frimpong and Dunty, uh, getting sent off, and Dunty 10 men five minutes after we have took the lead. And then Morelos. And I mean, any other time James Tavernier would take a penalty. But it was uh-huh. almost as if they used a moment they should never have used to try and get Morelos' his first goal against Celtic. Uh, and he, I just, I just didn't. I, I always felt that he, he might have saved that one. And you know, they actually tried to claim for a penalty seconds after it because when we I were trying to clear it, they, and then I feel probably should have got a red because he absolutely does 
uh, Christie Christ outside. Aye. Aye. Oh, but do you know, aye. You know, but do you know what I love about it? Obviously, they, they nearly scored quite late on with the, that one you were talking about. It went flashing across the goal. Mm-hmm. Is the fact when the full time whistle went, nobody shook hands. All oh, the Celtic right. players to our managers ran to the Celtic end, you know, <laughs> like fists up. And Fraser Foster does the big ass slide on the, the pitch and stuff like that. Like That's... Brown right in front of the Rangers fans going at you. There's a brilliant video getting about for the Rangers end when Rangers have got the penalty, you know, and they're, they're shouting all sorts of abuse to Frimpong. And then they're, they, they're waiting on Morelis. You know, they're shouting abuse at Frimpong, yet. You know, they've got a guy the same colour, you know, same creed, you know, ready to step up for them. And he misses it. And now you hear in the background is, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that sticks out for me in that game as well, something I forgot to mention is like, that could have been so much easier if Mikey Johnson had just took a moment to just hit it with his left. If he hit it with his left, I thought it was in. Yeah. And my mate Martin was literally, you know, holding it. This is it. This is it. And he never shut up about it the whole game. I was like, Martin, look, it's gone now. Leave it. And right on the yeah. full-time whistle, we were actually on the break again. I think we were two or three against one, uh, mm-hmm. but the ref blows the whistle. But uh, it's it's a it, it's it was a banter day, more than anything. Uh, that this you've absolutely battered us, but still couldn't get the job done. So uh, for me, it had to be in there, but it's a wee bit further down because it was an absolute agonising watch. To be honest, uh, it was. <laughs> yeah. So your number seven. Um, my number seven is. Celtic 5, Hearts 0 on the 12th of February 2020. Um, this was a, a midweek card and it was I thought we played absolutely fantastic that night and it was also the kind of turning point of whereby we could not be, well, we, we could have been caught but we were in the ascendancy after what had happened on the 29th of December and Eamon Brophy scoring the, the, the winner for Kilmarnock and mm-hmm. There's a guy in front of me at Parkhead, and my dad would verify this. He's watching this now. There's a guy in front of me. He's he's quite a big gentleman, but I've never seen the guy move so quickly and jump up when Eamon Brophy scored. He was jumping up, up and down like a fucking dancer, you know? And that just reverberated around the whole ground. And they, don't, they don't like, they they don't like a tractical manner just after New Year, do they? No, well, I was kind of hoping that was uh, going to be another thing to happen today, but unfortunately, they kind of got the better of us, but, uh, or the better of Motherwell, I should say, but Hey ho, um, but no, that was thought we played great. You know, some great quality attacking goals, and Julian got a cracking header. Christie, um, McGregor, and even Greg Taylor had a good game that day. Yeah. There's no way yeah. I can say that. Um, but I aye, don't say that. that. There's a few. There's a few <laughs> Greg Taylor fanboys out there. So, <laughs> oh, well, they can see what they want. But that's uh, the magnificent seven on my list. Yeah. yeah. Well, seven for me. It's probably a wee bit further down the list than most people maybe have theirs, but I've got Celtic 5, Rangers 1 on the 10th of September 2016. Uh, the reason I have that game in there was there was a big hullabaloo about Rangers. You know, they, they came, that was our first season in the Premier, the Premiership. They were, had the big TFO going for 55 and stuff like that. You know, Joey Barton was here to sort Scott Brown out. You know, and I think the whole showdown with Brown and Barton, where he's kind of walking away, he's he's shaking hands with his head down and stuff like that. But what I remember uh, a few days earlier, myself and Harry Brady for Celtic Underground get invited onto BBC Radio Scotland for a sports sound sort of special on the mm-hmm. Thursday night. And Kenny McIntyre had said to me, we're going to have two Rangers guys, two Celtic guys, a couple of ex-players, a couple of journalists. We're going to give this the big build-up. You know, it's, you know, it's, the match of the season, da da da, and uh, I remember Peter Lovenkrans was giving it how much Rangers were in the ascendancy, and Mark Warburton's the next Guardiola and stuff like that. And I turned around and I said to him, you know, you know, this is your biggest game in years, and it's not even our biggest game this week because we had Barcelona a few days later in the <laughs> Champions League. Less <laughs> said about that, the better. I, but obviously, I that wasn't the, the best of games, but. I the the whole media gave it a big build up and obviously Dembele scores about twenty minutes in and then he scores no long after to make it two 0 and then they score right on half time so you know the game's still in the balance although Celtic have played really well in the first half in the second half this is the chance that they had that they still go on about to this day where Barry Mackay sort of flashed it across uh, the face of goal. Uh, at the back post and missed and then a few minutes later Sinclair makes it three Dembele gets his hat trick and then Stuart Armstrong rounds it off with a a tremendous fifth and 
it was a beautiful sunny day, you know, it was we put them in their place and it just sort of set the tone for the full season, uh, really, for us, I thought. So that's my reason for having it in the top ten. Well, that's definitely on my list. Of it. It's a bit further down, aye, but yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think if anybody was to say it, it'd be on their list because that was the if you were the if you were the first big test for Rogers and how would he deal with a Rangers side that were in the ascendancy and going for fifty five and yeah, oh they were they were loving it, but yeah, what an atmosphere, great sunny day. But, but what I remember about the game, uh, uh, what the, the spectacle, it all obviously it was a big there was a big thing about it on you know Sky and all that sort of stuff, but obviously the. The Green Brigade section or the North Curve had the, the green, uh, white and gold, or the green, white and orange, sorry, and the, the flag, you know, the, the flag of war. And the I Rangers know, end was just war. decked in sort of red, white and blue flags. So as a spectacle, it was everything mm-hmm. you'd want for a derby. The atmosphere was amazing. And then obviously we absolutely trounced them. So uh, tremendous yeah, stuff. Fantastic. So <laughs> what's your number six? Number six is another Rangers game. Um, it's... Uh, the three-two game at Ibrox, um, where we went down to ten men, and the famous "What's the goalie doing, Tom?" was born <laughs> with that. Um, what a goal by Rogic to get us back to level terms, and then obviously they went up two-one up with Daniel Kandea scoring two-one, and then obviously um, Dembele just lobbed. I think was it Fodringham you call him? Um, it was. Uh... And then, then uh, our great friend Douglas Ross. Um, I think he, I think he said it was a red card. I aye, just I the three know, times. A wee, bit, a wee bit dubious as to whether he said it was a red card or not. And then, to be fair, we made a, an attacking substitution and Edward came on. But I think the, the bit the bit for me is where it's the pass from Dembele. It's like inch perfect to Edward, and he just runs and runs and runs. <laughs> you think, will he get it away? And then you know, it's it has to be on there because that was a kind of game where they were. Oh, they were going to get us again, and we never, and we'd, we'd done it, you know, we'd, okay, we did hit, hold out, but Morelos has the miss of the season, and that one against Scott Bain, I mean, how he doesn't score that, I'll never know. Yeah, well, it's on my list, so I'll, I'll reserve yeah. my comments for it. <laughs> so, my number six is another Celtic Hearts game, Celtic 2, Hearts 1, Scottish Cup Final 2019, to mm-hmm. win the treble treble. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason I've got it a wee bit further down is because one, I didn't get tickets. For some reason, I'd been to every cup game and everything for years, and then all of a sudden, I'm no longer... I, I didn't... Even though I was at the semi, I didn't get a final ticket, so I was raging about that for a start. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we didn't actually play that well on the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, obviously, the th- what happened after, you know, with the, the announcement of the manager and the showers, it just kind of... You know, I'm not saying that Lennon was the... The wrong choice as such. Well, kind of, I'm actually, but um, <laughs> I just wanted this to go through the process. You know, let yeah. let the fans have their day, and let's talk about the manager in a couple of weeks' time. There was no rush. I don't think at that time. You know, we'd a brilliant squad. You know, we'd come through a bit of a bit of turmoil with Rogers up sticks. I just don't think it had to be done that day, and I think that took away the focus for what we'd actually achieved. But oh, the game itself. You know, Hearts go one 0 up. It's a bit of a, a sort of mix up in our defence, and the guy mm-hmm. sort of pokes at home, and you're like, "Oh my god, this isn't going to happen!" Because we just didn't look what's scoring really in the game, and then we get a penalty. You know, Edward done well to sort of buy the penalty. Mm-hmm. It's a penalty, but it's one of those ones that you know he, he made it. He made it. He made it a penalty more than it probably was. Um, I don't know if people will disagree with that. I might say it's a penalty or do it's a penalty, but it's on the softer side. I think he sticks the wee leg out, you know, into the keeper to make sure he goes down. And then obviously the the game was kinda in a wee bit of a lull for a bit. Yeah, and then that wasn't hit, it wasn't really going anywhere. And you're thinking, you know, one chance either side or it's going to extra time, and then all of a sudden that header just goes right through everybody and everybody, you know, and, and Edward's queen queen on and go and, and buries it like a, a boss, you know, it was he's, absolutely he's watching, amazing. He, if you watch it back, he, he's watching that ball come through and then it, just to take it and he took it superbly, you know. Yeah, I don't know what the Hearts defence were doing. Berra was miles behind and the keeper's done his best to come out, but the the fact that he's lifted it out of the keeper, you know, it's mm-hmm. in the scenes in the background because a lot of the Celtic fans had the sort of white and green uh, sort of plastic sort of nah. tops on to sort of gear. It's like a tifo can kind of affect. I it was that was a great. It would have been further down my list, but for the events mm. after the game that kind of they put a. And I mean, I know there's people out there that always wanted Lennon in after you know because he came in 
you know, the way he came in and stuff like that. But I just felt the club had to be a bit more professional about how they went about it. And I just felt, you know, the thing is, he didn't actually accept the job for about another week. And so it was, all, forever, you know? I, it was like, it was almost as if it was a shock to him that he'd actually been offered it. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the day off, even though he never needed to, you know. <laughs> but, I will start as you mean to go on. The, the boys have got the day off after a victory. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it, is on, f- it is on my list, definitely, uh, but it's a wee bit further down, you know. Number f- number five, what's your number five? Number five is Celtic Five Rangers now on the 29th of April 2018 to become seven in a row champions. Well, we can uh, both talk about this at the same time because that's exactly <laughs> where I've got mine. I mean, um. You couldn't ask for it to be better set up. Um, the previous week, we lose 2-1 to Hibs, and it, it's set up beautifully that we take three points from Rangers and we win. If there's any kids watching, by the way, alcohol's no good for you. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and he told me he was on water, by the way. That's what I, I, I bet when my wife says uh, she was going out and she'll bring the Chinese in tonight, I was like, peach, <laughs> I don't need to drive. <laughs> so anyway, back, back to what we said, it was, you couldn't ask for it to be better set up that we win a league against Rangers with 7,000 Rangers fans watching us celebrate and I didn't I didn't think we were going to win as convincingly as we did but when we did I mean for me when we did get the goal it just imploded everything because we were all over them again and yeah. it, it, it was just as long as we just get one goal then the, the floodgates will open because we get the first goal and then there's a gap between the first and the second but there's only about a two to three minute gap between the second and the third. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the thing that always sticks out in my head and is that the roar for the third goal because it's a great goal by Forrest. And I was just about to mention, just about to mention the third goal and the roar reminded me of when Lambert scored in the six uh, two, how it just became absolute bedlam, you know, it, it was amazing. The roar of it. But what happened in our stand was Joe that sits beside us, we think, wasn't too well and had to be calmed down. And it turned out that he had heart problems <laughs> after it. So, um, so we had to calm him down because um, it was weird because we were all jumping about and, you know, Joe's an old man. and But uh, oh, thankfully we managed to calm him down. He was okay. But the, 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 And I know you'll say it when, when, when you come on and I'll say it again, we did take my foot off the gas. And it, it's so annoying because we could have had six or seven. Maybe and that's right, and that's the reason why I've got it at number five and not number two or one because we had them by the throat. You know, mm-hmm. it's five now, and I think it's on fifty-five minutes or right. fifty-four minutes somewhere in that region, and you're like, we could actually take seven, eight, nine, ten if we really wanted to. And I know the keeper had a bit, uh, you know, a few inspired saves. Can I say that sort of moment onwards? But I remember leaving that game. Now, happy that we'd won the league and happy we'd won 5 0, but a wee bit disappointed, as terrible yeah. as that sounds, that we had this opportunity a lifetime almost because we might never get that opportunity again because they've obviously got their act together a wee bit. Um, but to absolutely destroy them would have been unbelievable, you know. And the fact is, we'd beat them the week before as well. So, I mean, it was like 9 0 and I could get over two games, but that, that, that's a good game as well. That, yeah, 4 0. But I mean, the thing is, is well, it's sort of like when you come out of Hamden and Neil Lennon's announced the permanent manager. It's like, yeah, we won, but oh, shit. <laughs> it could have been. Uh, it could have. Uh, it, uh, it could have been better. But we're not here. It's, uh, better, but it's like down here. Yeah. You know? We're not here to bash the manager. We've done that for no. weeks on end, so we've got to sort of try and stay in the positive side of this. So, like I, like you, number five, I've got that five 0 game. Eddie mm-hmm. scored twice. Eddie was outstanding that day and I remember there was a big thing on Twitter about who should start, should it be Lee Griffiths or Eddie and I was Eddie all day long because I just felt as he had a bit more quality about him and um, it was, the, it was like, I, think the sec- the second goal was incredible I think you know, just running at them sort of bob- bobbing, weaving and then sort of sticks it away he's right and at the bottom corner but Forrest as well, his goal was just uh, take away the, the, the <laughs> carnage and the crowd and stuff like that just the quality of his goal was just Unbelievable. He came out of holiday and Nace, um, Jason Cummins, who said, "Oh, he was going to do stuff." Well, God, I could take <laughs> this from Mickey at holiday, and I'm shite. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll move on. Uh, which your number four? Number four is one we've already previously discussed. It's Celtic two hearts one to complete the treble treble. Um, 
think this for me has to be in there and it has to be that you have to see it as a treble treble, something that we'll never see again. It's the, the trinity of trebles as the club branded it. Just a fantastic display by the Green Brigade to wear the, the I think I was wearing a green one, I think. Um and to make it look with five and nine and treble, it was very, very well uh, placed. But the game itself, as you say, was absolutely terrible. Um we didn't play great. I mean, I don't remember us really having a chance in the first half, if truth be told. I think we were, like Mikey Johnson maybe had a couple of runs, but nothing major. And then it, it seemed to be the goal sparked us into life a little bit because we did get quite a quick response. And Slamal nearly did get to it, the penalty. I mean, he got a hand yeah, on to it. We could actually hear, we could see him going, you know, showing his frustration. But it's just relief to actually get it. I was more nervous. It's kind of against. Go, uh, Goldson on it. It's that kind of under his hands uh, a wee bit, and probably could have done a bit better. But maybe uh, I, it's it's kind of like that. But I mean, just back to it. It's more that it it's a great achievement, and I was more nervous for that game than I was the invincible treble game, the one you said you were a bag of nails like in the so, previous. Man. I I was I was more nervous for that because I thought under Rogers I was never nervous, but under Lennon <laughs> it's just a bit more like because of the whole balloon, the climax, and what could have happened. You know. Well, yeah. my number four is Rangers 2, Celtic 3. So mm-hmm. you've had that a wee bit further up. Yeah. And I think the reason I've got that in there is just, you know, I think uh, I think Rangers were six points behind us, you know, and there was still a bit of the season to go. Mm-hmm. You know, and they'd had a wee bit of momentum under Murray. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember uh, an interview with Windass, I think it was Josh Windass, who scored for Rangers yeah. the first. Mm-hmm. He'd said that they went into that game thinking if they could win, that they thought they were on, you know, with a good I chance of winning league. the league. And obviously, we went 1 0 down, we weren't playing well, like you said. And then Tom Rogic not only scores a peach, but manages to do uh, the Rangers defender, what's his Bates. name? Who, <laughs> Bates. Uh, Bates, you know, he does his ankle at the same time, so he two, kills two birds with one stone. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and then obviously they, you know, take the lead again. We're a bit of shambles at the back with Candace. Yeah. And then what's funny about the goal, not only the what's the goalie day in comments, but the the roar when when Brown plays the ball up the field, the camera's mm-hmm. at a kind of low angle, and somebody mm-hmm. does Brown in the oh, tackle, it's Candace. and you, it's Candace. Uh, and you hear this big roar for the crowd mm-hmm. as if you know, yes. Mm-hmm. And then the, the next thing you see is it's just bouncing and Dembele's lifting it over the keeper and you're like, wow, that was amazing, right on half time because we needed that right on half time. And then, like you said, Simunovic gets sent off and you're like, oh my God, man, you know, just try and get out here with a draw. And then the breakaway for the goal, you know, the one touches and the one twos and stuff with and Cham and the McGregor and Dembele. Dembele and, then, and then Edward, that's where Edward really came to, you know, mm-hmm. came to life with Celtic. That's where he kind of announced it. You know, that's, ah, yeah, that's where he announced himself to the stage, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, buries it right in the top corner. It's absolutely tremendous stuff. And that but, was probably um, the game that, that spoiled the crowd, for the spoiled the atmosphere for me, because after that, then it was down to 700 people, and it's it's taken it away from me quite a bit, because it's not the same. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, should, it should be back to normal, but... That's but well, the crowd, the crowd that day was a full sort of stand behind the goal, that's, and it's just yeah. better, right? But you know, I think, it, I remember just... the. the the Morelos miss, just laughing my head off for, you know, uh, for about 10 minutes it, solid because... Uh, it's weird because, like, it, it's, the, it's the reaction of David, uh, Graham Murray going, oh, no, how <laughs> did they miss it? But I think what the difference showed you in the coaches that day was when we went down to 10, Rogers shouted Brown out and he was giving it sort of instructions mm-hmm. on who's to play where, mm-hmm. and then it cut across to Murray and he's giving it, you know, uh, come on, on, and that was the difference yeah. between the quality and the coaching and... Uh, I remember some comments we made about that on Twitter. Right, I'm just conscious of time. I want you to be able to get through this. Um, yeah. So, number three, what's your number three? Number three is, is one we've already previously discussed. Um, Celtic 5, Rangers 1 on the 10th of September 2016. And pretty much you've covered what I've said <laughs> with regards to it. Um, it's the first big test for, for this new Celtic team under Rodgers. It always will be. Um, great goals, but I think the fact that sticks out for me is the Brown Barton battle. And then I think it's when Dembele, who sends Senderos into the Rangers fans there when he turns it inside out of him and makes it 2 0. 
and Brown was just running past Barton and obviously he said he was just checking to make sure he was all right. <laughs> you know, it's just a great kind of, yeah, let, let's see how good you really really are. And then the, the best goal for me is Dembele's third. He just, yeah. it's chest The way he takes it down. And that, to me, that was the best goal because it was just... Plus it, it threw up the best picture with, um, with well, was it the, the Armstrong one with the... Barton picking the ball out and amongst all the beach uh, balls. That, that, that is that is saved somewhere on my phone for uh, for future use. Um, but yeah. yeah, for me it's got to be in there. So my number three is Celtic 2, Motherwell 0, Scottish Cup final, 20th of May 2018. McGregor and Incham. Reasons I picked that is not necessarily the game, although I think McGregor scores what I would say is the best modern day goal in Scottish Cup final history. The way mm. he takes it on a half volley and with the wrong foot and pings it in the yeah. top top corner. And then obviously in Cham, uh, good goal from outside the box. It was a bit of a procession as a game, you know. We, we knew pretty, unlike the year before yeah. where it went to the death, I think this game we knew it was pretty much wrapped up. It was a beautiful sunny day. But I think what stands out for me is the the event at Celtic Park afterwards. Yeah. Um, with the... The celebrations of that beer, man, honestly. Um, <laughs> the, the celebrations after, I'd never seen anything like it with, uh, with Celtic. And um, I, it was it was just unbelievable. I've got loads of videos and stuff in my boat. We were right there as the Celtic bus arrived. We were just a couple of yards beyond the sort of poles that come up on the, the Celtic way. And uh-huh. the players were all coming up. And there's the ticker tape. You can see further down the, the boys on top of the, uh, the, the post. Man. <laughs> it was just bedlam. And as... as the ticker tape's going up. Some these there's a guy playing "You'll Never Walk Alone" on this acoustic guitar and stuff like that in the background. It was just a momentous day all round. A brilliant performance, a double treble. You know, it'd never been done before. Uh, unlike you know what we're ready to go for uh, tomorrow, but uh, amazing stuff. And uh, that's why it makes my uh, top three. So well, it's not on my list, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, but it's more for the the fact that it was a procession. It didn't feel like a cup final. Yeah. I know it was, but it was just like, well, we got the two goals and they didn't look my little game in trouble well despite that day, and they never really caused us any hassle. So that yeah. it yeah. just can't be in there, you know, and people will like disagree. But yeah. yeah. Right. So I, I want to say try and crack on yeah. before we so we've only yeah. got maybe twelve minutes left. So number two, what's your number two? My number two is Celtic two hearts nil on the last game of the league season in the Rogers Invincible. So it's it's got to be in there. Because that was an unbeaten league campaign, and that game I was particularly nervous about. I just thought Hearts could maybe disrupt it, and then it would just take the shine off of what what it could have been. But and we obviously nil nil at half time. But um, two great goals, a crank header by Griffiths, and then Armstrong, who came into his own in that season and one of the best players of that that season, um, with a great left foot finish and. The, the display as well is just something that's the display that's better than the uh, Barcelona one for me. And the know? display was outstanding. It was amazing. Uh, to be fair, it's not on my list, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I thought about it. But I think, I think it was because it was part of something bigger. That's mm-hmm. why I didn't put it in my list. And I don't think it was the greatest of games. And I don't think we played that well in the game. But no. we were done enough to get over the line. And mm-hmm. but the 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 tifo before was just unbelievable. It, so it has to be there. Well, my number two is Rangers 1, Celtic 5 on the 29th of April 2017. And the reason I've got it at number two is for me it is the most complete performance I've ever seen Celtic play. Mm-hmm. Probably in any game. We uh-huh. annihilated Rangers that day. And it could have been anything. You know, it was unbelievable start to finish. You know, the anything for the Yozo tackle to nearly score and f- do you know the only thing missing for that game is we didn't actually score for that on oh, the back actually. of that tackle it, we hit the bar and then Sinclair put it past the post when he should have buried it if that that would have been the ultimate goal if we put that away but I just think start to finish Celtic were awesome that day and I think we would have I mean it's easy to say but I felt uh, as if we could have beat anybody that day it was unbelievable and the the Lustig finish at the end to make it 5-1 really topped it off I think the thing about Lustig's celebration, he doesn't know what to do. It'd be like any other Celtic fan, like, what do I do? Do I take my top off? Do I put it down? Do I run? Like, he was a bit all over the place, but actually, I think there was a funny thing about when Rangers scored, they actually played goal music (laughs) to make it 4 1. Kenny Miller scored, but I I just think 
performance-wise, it's up there with anything I've ever seen Celtic do. It was incredible. You know, we nearly scored in the first minute. We got a penalty after five minutes. Sinclair buries it. Griffiths on the break, you know, pings it and then wipes his nose on the... Or he wipes his horn on the, the corner flag and then some guy invades the park and then... Uh, who's got the third McGregor with a brilliant run for Roberts and then uh, McGregor buries it Boyata with a bullet header for about five yards out you know Superb. and then obviously the listed goal I just think for me it's the ultimate performance in this whole period that Celtic mm-hmm. uh, uh, had uh, dominance people I, I mean I, I did there was certainly scope for that to be put in there but I just couldn't because it's I, I don't I just I think I've made not a bad job of it, and there is plenty of games. I mean, if you had top twenty, it would be so much easier. And if you yeah. say it, yeah. like, I thought we had, would have had, I thought we would have had more, you know, somewhere. But it's actually quite diverse, yeah. and it's weird how it works out. How people see things good, differently. Think, you know, right? Sometimes that's good, but I think and, that, we'll all have- and anybody listening in or watching, uh, oh, sorry, watching, you know, this isn't a, what this is what we think. This is what it means to us. You know, everybody else will have their own top 10, but, you know, it's just, I just felt it was something that had to be uh, looked at. You know, I've just noticed that uh, it's, we're up to 16,247. Yeah, so we must be, there, we must be, we must be entertaining because people are plowing the money in. <laughs> it does say, though, I will just say it says including auctions. So, I mean, I don't yeah. know if it's there. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a fantastic total, and well done to everybody for, for yeah, packing that in. Absolutely, and keep keep yeah. donating. Uh, go to the Celtic State of Mind Twitter page. The GoFundMe's on there, and uh, you know keep I stay. Done it uh, same, I done it last night. So stay tuned in for all the other pods coming up. So that moves us on to our number one, and I've got a funny feeling we haven't discussed yeah. this before we came on, but I've got a yeah. funny feeling both of us have gone for the same the same game as the number it's got, one. It's got to be, and I'll say first thing is we've, we've followed the same order, and it's Celtic two, Aberdeen one. In the Invincible Cup final, it, yeah, it's yeah. got to be there. I mean, when we done this, listen, you told me what we're, it had to be the number one. It was basically just how did I do two to ten? Yeah, because yeah. that has everything. It was, I remember it was a, it was part of a hot a heat wave in Glasgow, but it absolutely pissed down with rain oh. for the whole time. Well, I just avoided the rain because I was see where the the Celtic end meets the North Stand, mm-hmm. or was it the South Stand? The one that's not got two tiers. I can never remember. No fan, no well, fan. we are we are right on where the fence is, right at the corner flag, but we're only ten sort of ten seats back. So we were just under cover. We get into the game just before the rain had uh, came down and there was guys coming in running about me were just drenched, you know, it was uh, I think but we, I, still, I think we, we just get in as well, but I remember thinking, Oh my god, I've got sh- I've worn shorts to get in. I never wear shorts to game, but it was that warm. <laughs> I said, I'm not wearing jeans. Yeah, I wore shorts as well. Aye. Um, but the game itself, obviously, we go 1 0 down. We didn't really start that well. Johnny Hayes no. gives Aberdeen the lead. And then within, Aberdeen never touched the ball for kickoff. So mm-hmm. we made it 1 1 without Aberdeen actually touching the ball, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. But the, the Stuart Armstrong goal was unbelievable. You know, and I think we had, a couple, of, uh, we had a couple of good chances. I think Scott Sinclair had a great chance in the first half. Mm-hmm. But then Aberdeen. Aberdeen had a breakaway where McGregor makes a mistake and the ball gets played across and I think it was McLean, the ball was played behind him. I think it was Johnny Hayes, actually. It was Johnny a shite Hayes, ball. he puts it in. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike Johnny Hayes to play a shite cross. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I just remember as Pepper near goal, I think Roberts at the post, Sinclair missed a chance, Lustig missed a header at the back yeah, post, Boyata yeah. right missed a chance. I, but I just... I just remember thinking, this is going to be extra time, you know, and I think we'll do it in extra time. I wasn't a... And then obviously, uh, Roger picks the ball up, but we were quite a low level, and there was a lot of bodies in front, and you see him drifting past player after player. And it's true, there was a crack of thunder mm-hmm. happened as he's right. bearing down and go, and then he buries it. And the first I realise it's a go is it's hit the net, sort of mm-hmm. at my side, and then it was uh-huh. just absolute, it was mayhem, absolute mayhem. It was I, incredible. I can't, I can't remember. I can remember the ball hit the net, but I just remember the ball hitting the net, and there's absolute bedlam in the stands, and I can't remember how I celebrated. It's just like. Aye. It was just a blur, but I remember the ball hit the net just going past, what is it, Joe? Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis. And oh, it was just crazy. Absolutely yeah. crazy. And the I, best gift ever with Craig Gordon. I, it's, I think it goes down in Celtic folklore. It's the probably, you know, the modern day greatest, one of the modern day greatest moments, you know, up there with the Boa Vista semi final and stuff like that. Or, you know, um, it's for me, it's incredible. It was, Unbelievable feeling, you know, the emotions, they never walk alone after it, the rain coming down, it was just, 
it was just one of the days that it just was meant to be, you know, and obviously it set us on a, a path of dominance oh for God, the last four years. Hard, it was, it was right to the end. I mean, I it's, a great, it's a great but individual goal by Roglic, and he came on as a sub for Tierney. He did. That day. I will Tierney get his jaw broke uh, uh, pretty much, didn't he? And then he comes sure. back to, uh, to, you see him, there's pictures or video footage of him running as Aberdeen fans are leaving, you know, you get back into the stadium. I was, I was still in his kit. <laughs> So tremendous stuff. So I think we've only got a couple of minutes left. So that was our uh, Celtic top 10 from the quadruple treble, potential quadruple treble no, uh, potential season. Let's not break it. Let's not kind of... Lots of people might not agree with the selections, but I'd like to think there's at least half of what we've picked other people would have picked as well. So on to tomorrow, which are... Oh no, bore everybody with lineups and stuff like that. <laughs> Excuse me. Honestly, I should I should I should have stuck to water that beer's dead first. Um I finished right before we came on. <laughs> uh what's your prediction score wise uh, for the game? I think it is I think people are kinda of playing it down. Like I know we've got we're on a wee bit a wee bit of a of a high now because the indicators on. Yeah, the indicators on we've spoken about. In the corner, right? And hopefully tomorrow that might be more signs that we've turned a corner, but I th- I think it will still be a tight game. Um, Hearts will be very much up for it when you've yeah, got people yeah. like Naismith and Halliday who have been there and done that way. I said another team. Want to sort of prove Celtic yeah. wrong. They will wrong. And, on as well. and they'll want to, they'll have, they'll, Robbie Nielsen will have them fired up for this and we need to play the right team. And by that, I mean, do not play Scott Brown from the start um, because I think we need to play Turnbull and Sorrow. That's just my opinion. Um, I think if, if he starts with Turnbull, and sorrow and loses a game. I don't think he gets criticised overly. I no. think if he plays Brown and Christie instead, you know, of those two, mm-hmm. and we lose, I think he'll get absolutely slaughtered. You know, I think everyone is pretty much saying the same team: Hazard, Waxout, uh, Duffy, Julian, Ayer, right back, midfielder, Sorrow and McGregor, who has been brilliant since Sorrow's come in. And then mm-hmm. you've, I think Christie might start ahead of Frimpong. Yeah, uh, I think Tumble will start. El Yunusi will start, and I think Edward will start. That's what I think the team will be. Um, I'm pretty much the same because I, everybody's saying the same, and you've got to go with Eddie. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot being said about Eddie today, but let's hope he maybe gets a goal in that. Maybe gets well, that confidence. Right. You know, what I fancy is for a three 0 victory. That's what I'm going to go for. Well, I'm going to go for history repeating itself in two one. Yeah. That's what I'm going for. Right. So. We're just about out of time. I think we've maybe got a minute and a half or two minutes. Yeah. So you can catch us most Tuesdays. We try and get out on a Tuesday night unless there's a game. Uh, our podcast, uh, the Celtic End podcast, my Twitter account or the main Twitter account is the Celtic po- the Celtic End pod. Uh, what's your Twitter account, Kev? My Twitter account is at wekev1888. So are you really that wee? Are you five well, for five or something? Right. I'm, I'm really you, for, is there a big Kev in your family? No, it's just like my, my dad has always called me Wee Man, or like, oh, right, like right. when I was at school, it was Wee Man, or like when I was playing football, it was Wee Man. So I just thought oh, I'll just go with Wee Kev 1888. But I think I'm a respectable five foot seven now, so yeah. I need to change it to medium Kev. <laughs> Um, you've done. I've just noticed you've done the right thing. You've got kind of dimmed lighting in your bedroom. I've got a lamp right above me, it's shining on my big dome. So, uh, any yeah. nice lagging the the forehead, by the way. I know. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying nothing. I'm saying nothing. I'm not noticed that at all. You know. Uh, but, um, <laughs> I think I'm doing all right for a forty-two year old. So, I was like, does my beard look okay? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Is before we uh, just quickly before we came on, I couldn't get logged in, and I was starting to panic. I thought I'm going to have to do this on my phone. It was an absolute nightmare because my Mac is got. A, didn't they support the uh, Firefox or uh, Chrome? I had to download it. So Paul gave me literally 15 minutes to sort my shit out. So thanks for that. But I just oh, want to say, <laughs> I, I just want to say to everybody who's tuned in to us and all the podcasts that have been on before, thanks for your, yep. uh, thanks for tuning in. I've no bother getting into the comments because it just puts you half. Um, and that's probably people not, not supporting Celtic. And again, is abuse. I don't care. Um, I just keep, if, if you can donate anything, a pound, a fiver, a tenner, whatever you can, just go onto the Axom Twitter page or the, uh, click on the GoFundMe and uh, stick your details in, throw in a few quid and uh, help support these charities that you can see coming across the, the bottom there. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say thanks to Paul John for inviting yeah, us thank on. You. Thank you, and, my friend. Uh, it was really good. Aye, and it's been weird because we don't normally do the with the cameras no. on. 
<laughs> it's the first time I've seen a face like, uh, 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 so. um, I, I was more nervous for this because I didn't want I don't know how I would look doing this, but uh, uh, good. Uh, it. Don't worry about it. So I I'm just waiting for us to get kicked off and then we'll and then we'll be on our way and we'll tune in to I'm looking forward to hearing the four uh, four Tims in a pod later on. That's they're the always that is the best one. <laughs> they're <laughs> always good. they're always good for a laugh. I'm also waiting to hear um Selic Da as well. That'll be good Yeah, they oh they get the early shift tomorrow morning. Uh they're um, on at nine o'clock. So I think, I think Patchy was a wee bit well more happy that he gets four hours drinking time after it. So he'll be uh, happy that's true. I, I messaged them that uh, at least we can get on it early. So fair dues to them. So I we're just waiting to be yeah, uh, so I, I everybody keep donating and keep pledging money. It really does go a long way. So we're really yeah. what we've earned so far, and hopefully we can hit the target. You know, yeah, so I 